Okay, so let's take a look at the Gibbs free energy and the role that temperature plays in spontaneity. Of course, we know that delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S, and also that this is negative for spontaneous processes and positive for non-spontaneous ones. Uh, so as noted in the text, there are four possible different permutations for the signs for delta H and delta S, and I wanna go through each one of those cases. Um, so let's arbitrarily say that case one is where we have a endothermic reaction and a negative entropic uh, uh, value. Um, and before we begin uh, our analyses, I want to remind you that the temperature is always going to be positive uh, because this is going to be in uh, Kelvin rather than in degrees Celsius. And of course, Kelvin starts at zero uh, K and goes up from there. Um, in particular, I want to pay attention to this minus T delta S term. So if delta S is negative, it follows that minus T delta S must be positive, And the sum of delta H and uh, T delta S is going to be positive. There's no way for delta G to be uh, negative here. So um, what I'm gonna argue is that delta G is always positive and that the reaction is going to be non-spontaneous at all temperatures. So there's no temperature that we can find to make this reaction spontaneous. So let's go on to case two and we'll summarize these results and they're summarized on in, in your text, but we'll summarize them at the end. So case two, let's suppose that we have an exothermic reaction and a positive value for delta S. Here the minus T delta S term will be negative and two negatives added together will give us a negative value for delta G, regardless of the temperature. So the analysis here suggests that when we have an exothermic reaction and a positive value for delta uh, S, the reaction is always going to be spontaneous. Now it's worth kind of thinking about, um, and we'll summarize this again uh, at the end as well, um, what is favorable for spontaneity? And what I mean by this is what signs will tend to make delta G negative? Well, obviously a minus value for delta H will uh, affect the uh, value for delta G by making it negative or more negative, as will a positive value for delta S. So the two most ideal uh, uh, factors here, or two ideal signs that we could have is a minus value for delta H and a positive value for delta S. Both of these will contribute to ensure that delta G is always negative. So if you were designing a reaction, ideally, and you wanted the reaction to occur, you would always pick a minus value for delta H and a positive value for delta S. Um, not always uh, the case that you can do that in practice, but that would be the ideal. Now, uh, the fun part, or maybe more fun or less fun, depending on your um, point of view, occurs when the signs of delta H and delta S are the same. And we're going to see that temperature is going to play a deciding role here, and only when the signs for delta H and delta S are the same. So looking at this case, uh, we can see that the minus T delta S term will be negative because we have a minus here and a positive value for delta S. And we kind of have a battle here going on. The delta H is positive, which is going to tend to make delta G positive, but the minus T delta S term is going to be negative, which is going to tend to make delta G negative. So we really can't offer um, a concrete analysis of this one until we look at the temperature. So the temperature here is going to play a uh, deciding role. Now I'm going to pretend that we have two cases uh, within this uh, 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 case three or within this subset, if you will. Let's suppose that we're first at high temperature. Now this is a relative term, it depends on the reaction. Uh, for the melting of ice, high temperature may be five degrees Celsius, whereas if it was the production of calcium oxide, it might be 800 degrees Celsius. So it's dependent on the reaction, and that's why I put this in uh, quotation marks. But if you can imagine a high temperature, what I'm gonna argue and what's gonna be important is the magnitude of the T delta S term compared to the delta H. If this is bigger than delta H, the delta G for the reaction will be negative because this term will win. Uh, conversely, if this term is lower in magnitude or less in magnitude than delta H, this term will win and delta G will be positive. And I tried to illustrate this kind of with this uh, 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 sphere or circle here. So at high temperature, this term is going to become more important. It's going to dominate the delta H term. Combined, we're going to argue that the delta G will therefore be negative because this will be more important than delta H. On the flip side, if we have a lower temperature, again, this is relative, it doesn't necessarily mean anything in absolute degrees, the delta H term is going to take on greater importance. It's going to be greater in magnitude and dominate the T delta S term. So in this case, delta G would be positive because this term is going to be more important. Um, 
So here, temperature actually is going to play the deciding role. If delta H and delta S are both positive, the Gibbs free energy of is going to be negative or a spontaneous process at high temperature and a positive value or non-spontaneous process at low temperature. So when the signs are the same, we're going to see that temperature is going to play the deciding role. Okay, let's go to our last case. Um, so this would just be the reverse of case three where we have an exothermic reaction and a minus value for delta S. Um, again, as we've seen before, we see that the minus T delta S term is going to be positive. Um, so what we have here, again, is a battle between uh, the magnitudes of delta H and T delta S. If delta H wins out, delta G will be negative, which will be good for spontaneity because it will make the reaction spontaneous. Whereas if the T delta S term wins out, we will have a uh, positive value for delta G, which disfavors spontaneity. Um, so again, we really can't say anything until we know something about the temperature. Um, so let's pretend that we have a low temperature first, again, that this is a relative term. Uh, we started with a high temperature in case three. We're going to start with low temperature here because that's what makes it uh, spontaneous, um, just my personal preference. Um, here, since the T delta S term will be de-emphasized, its magnitude will be lower than that of delta H, we can say that delta G will be negative and the reaction will be spontaneous. On the other hand, if we have a high temperature, the T delta S term uh, becomes larger than delta H at some point, uh, rendering the reaction uh, non-spontaneous and delta G uh, would have a positive value. Um, so again, notice that the signs are the same. Um, and this is a, a case where temperature will play a deciding factor. Uh, it will be non-spontaneous at high temperatures and negative. Uh, the de value for delta G will be negative at low temperatures. Um, so I mentioned this earlier in uh, the slide, but again, you should start to think about what tends to make uh, reactions spontaneous. Um, and if you were designing a process, if you were an engineer or a, a chemist, a uh, medicinal chemist, you would want to pick exothermic reactions because that will make delta G negative. Um, and also you'd want a delta S value that was positive because this term would also be negative as well. On the other hand, if you didn't want a process to occur, and there are many reactions we don't want to occur, we'd want to pick an endothermic reaction because that would tend to make delta G positive and we would want a minus value for delta S. So this is why uh, the text book notes that many people first thought that the criterion for spontaneity was exothermic exothermicity excuse me uh, because most uh, reactions that are spontaneous are exothermic but not all sometimes the entropic term can overwhelm a endothermic uh, uh, process so let's offer a summary of what we just discussed uh, and I want you to pay attention to uh, a couple observations here. Uh, one, um, cases one and two where the signs are different, temperature does not play a role. The reaction is either always non-spontaneous, as it is in case one, or always spontaneous, as it is in case two. Temperature plays a role in case three and four, and again, an easy way to note this is when the signs of delta H and delta S are the same. Um, you don't have to memorize this chart because you can always use the equation delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S to figure it out. It's not something that you should feel uh, obligated to, to know. Um, you will have to think a little bit about whether or not um, the reaction will be spontaneous at high or low temperatures, but that just requires a little bit of algebra um, and, uh, and for you to go through the analysis that we, uh, that we just did. Uh, good luck with your understanding of Gibbs free energy and the temperature dependence on spontaneity.